Hello, Madagascar fish eagles. Oof, that's a mouthful. All right, today our topic is saving time and energy with Google Classroom. So hopefully by the end of this quick session, um, you'll have learned a couple of tips and tricks. Yes, it will require a little bit of upfront investment on, on your part for you know time and energy, but I am quite certain uh, based on my own experience, based on you know study after study after study, that if you invest this time and energy right now, you're going to save yourself a ton of time and energy over the course of this year. So without any further ado, let's dive in. Uh, I lied, it's actually six tips. Here's the first one. Up in the top right, our little cog icon. Let's go to our Google Classroom, and then we'll click on that. Once you've done that, scroll on down to where it says stream and classwork on the stream. What I would recommend here before we do anything else on the stream you might want to set it to only teachers can post or comment. The reason I say that is middle school kids will use any chance they can to turn a learning platform into social media, at least in my experience, right? I've had, uh, you know, put all this work and time and stuff into my Google Classroom, and then kids just go on there and chat about, you know, what Jessica said at recess or whatever. So cut that out before it even starts by clicking on only teachers can post or comment. Next, classwork on the stream. Strongly recommend hide notifications. Two reasons. Number one, it'll uh, make your Google Classroom not so cluttered with a bunch of random stuff on there. It keeps it a lot neat and organized. And number two, if I'm not mistaken, it also reduces the amount of spam you get in your email. All right. That was the unofficial first tip. Here's the official first tip. Uh, let's talk about creating a uh, topic. So up in our Classwork tab here at the top, we'll click that. You'll notice a button says create. We'll click that and go down to topic. This can be whatever works for you. I'll say unit one, but whatever makes sense for your class is great. You'll notice that it then splits up into these really handy, neat, organized sort of units. It's a great way. Let's say that uh, Tommy misses class yesterday and he comes back in. What did we do yesterday? You can just say, hey, Tommy, check Google Classroom. It's right there in unit one. It really cuts down on a lot of the, the reteaching stuff. It helps te you know, keep a running record of, of lessons. It's super, super useful. Um, again, cuts down on uh, disorganization, that kind of stuff. Any materials you want to move in, anything you post, assignments, whatever. Oop. Sorry. You can simply click and drag in. There we go. All right, moving on. Number two. Private comments. All right, I'm going to borrow Mr. Benjamin's for this one. He's been kind enough to allow me to uh, use his, his course today as an example. So here's Mr. Benjamin's classwork stream. What I'm gonna do is just click on any old assignment here. Oh, let's say this one. 10 kids turned it in, great, we'll click on that. All right, now I'm gonna take a look at Justin here. All right, cool. Now, I don't know about you, but over the years I had many kids who uh, were shy or embarrassed. They didn't want to talk or raise their hand or ask for help. That's a pretty common thing in middle school. And so one thing you can do to offer feedback and, and redirection for kids with very little uh, in invasiveness is the private comment section here on the right side. You'll simply click it, type in whatever you want to say, post it. And when they take a look back at their assignment, they'll have specific feedback from you. They can refer to any time. Uh, and, and again, just, just creating that documentation, creating that running record for students and for you, super useful. All right, next, emailing groups and classes. All right, going back to my main screen here, you'll notice when you uh, create an announcement or when you assign classwork, you'll have the opportunity to just determine, I want this to be pushed out to all my classes, certain classes, all my kids, certain kids. This is an amazing and powerful tool for differentiation. Um, different kids in the class can be uh, working on their scaffolded assignments without ever realizing they're doing something different than the kid beside them. So it's, again, a great way to sort of cut out the whole, you know, middle school social pressure mockery nonsense. And just all the kids need to know is your assignment is this, their assignment is that, right? Okay, next, uh, the grades tab and bulk export. Here's a fun one. Up here in the top, you click on our grades tab. And you may or may not use this. If you don't, I totally understand. Like we're using jump rope this year. If you are a teacher who uses this, here's a, here's a tip that you might enjoy. So click on any assignment at all, doesn't matter. Then we'll click on our cog in the top right and we'll hit copy all grades to Google Sheets. Check this out. Suspenseful loading screen. 
and boom, look at this. Every assignment, Mr. Benjamin has posted all year long along with the students and the point value that they earn for that assignment. So if SLCs are coming up and you're like, oh crap, I need to crunch and you know double check, uh, you know, put in some grades at the last second, this is a great way to do that. Uh, it's laid out visually neat. You don't have to dig through assignment after assignment. It's all there for you. Okay, last but not least, scheduling assignments. Here's something that Mr. Benjamin does really, really well. I'm going to go into his classwork tab one more, one last time. And you'll notice that some of these things are grayed out, right? Grayed out, grayed out, grayed out. These uh, these colored ones are, are posted. These grayed out ones have not yet been posted. And if we zoom in, you can see that they are scheduled to be posted. So Mr. Benjamin has proactively uh, posted these things and then scheduled them for when he wants them to appear on his class page. Here's how you do that. Click on create, drop whatever you want to put in. And then before you post it, instead of just clicking post, we're going to go to this arrow icon, schedule it. Now we can say, I want this to be posted on such and such a date at such and such a time and schedule it. Super powerful tool. Again, if, you have, if you're sitting in planning and you want to plan ahead, it's a great way to do it. Save yourself some time and energy down the road. I hope these tips help. Um, we're all professionals in here. If you have any feedback or tips or, or tricks for me I'd, or, or fellow teachers, I'd, I'd love for us to share those and learn from each other. Otherwise, take a moment. You can either engage with... Uh,